Hello, in this session we'll take a look at concavity and curve sketching and in this session we'll see how the second derivative gives information about the way the graph of a differentiable function bends or curves. And in order to accomplish that We'll need to know the second derivative test for concavity. And it says that let y equal f of x be a twice different differentiable on an interval i. If the second derivative is positive or greater than 0, the graph is concave up over that interval. If the second derivative is negative, then the graph is concave down on that interval. Concave up means that our curve can hold water. Concave down means the curve cannot hold water. Next we'll take a look at the point of inflection and a point of inflection is a point where the graph has a tangent line and where the concavity changes is called the point of inflection. Next we'll take a look at the second derivative test for local extremes and it says that if the first derivative evaluated at some number is equal to zero if the second derivative evaluated at the same number is less than zero, we have a local maximum. If the second derivative evaluated at that number is greater than zero, we have a local minimum. So just notice that less than or negative is a local maximum. And the second derivative greater than zero or positive is a local minimum. Now we'll take a look at an example. And in this example, we'll ask to identify the inflection points, the local maxima and minima, and also identify the intervals on which the function is concave up and concave down. We have the function y is equal to x to the third power over 3 minus x squared over 2 minus 2x plus 1 third. And first we'll proceed to find the point of intersection. And to find the point of intersection Next we'll see we'll next we'll proceed to find the point of inflection. And here are the steps involved in finding the point of inflection. The first thing we'll do is we'll find the second derivative. After finding the second derivative, we'll set the second derivative equal to zero. And lastly, we'll evaluate our original function y at the values where the second derivative is equal to zero. So we have our function, and this is to find the point of inflection. The first thing we'll do is find the second derivative. So we're given that y is equal to x to the third over 3 minus x squared over 2 minus 2x plus 1 third. 
our first derivative we have x squared minus x minus 2 and for our second derivative we have 2x minus 1 secondly we'll set the second derivative equal to 0 and once again the second derivative is 2x minus 1 we'll simply set that equal to 0 and solve for x so we'll add 1 divide by 2 so we get the value x is equal to 1 half the last step in finding the point of inflection is to evaluate y at y double prime is equal to zero which is x is equal to one half so we, ev we will evaluate our function y which is x to the third over three minus x squared over two minus two x plus one third and we'll substitute x for one half Next, I'll find the least common denominator, which is 24. Now I'll simply make equivalent fractions. Since I have a common denominator, I'll keep my common denominator. Once we reduce, we have a negative three-fourths. So our point of inflection happens at the coordinates one-half and negative three-fourths. Next, we'll test for concavity to see where our curve bends or turns. And in order to test for concavity, we'll simply use the inflection point. to subdivide the interval will then choose a number on either side of the interval and evaluate at the second derivative. So we'll use the inflection point or more specifically the x coordinate of our inflection point to subdivide the interval. We'll take a 
number on both sides of the interval will evaluate at y double prime and we'll use the fact that if our second derivative is negative we have a Then we'll use the fact that if the second derivative is positive, our graph is concave up. If our second derivative is negative, then our graph is concave down. So keep in mind that our inflection point was one half and negative three fourths. So I'll simply take that x coordinate which is one half. I'll take a number on either side. So to the left of one half I'll take zero. To the right of one half I'll take positive one. We'll evaluate zero and one in our second derivative. So our second derivative is 2x minus 1. So we'll find y double prime of 0. Our second derivative evaluated at some number is negative. So on the interval that contains 0, our graph is concave down. We're concave down on the interval from negative infinity to one half. We'll evaluate one at the second derivative, so we'll find y double prime of one. And we have a positive one. Since we have a positive one, our graph is concave up on the interval from one half to positive infinity. The next thing we'll do is test for min and max. So here are the steps that are involved. The first thing we'll do is find the critical numbers. So we'll set our first derivative equal to zero. Secondly, we'll evaluate the second derivative at the critical points. And this will give us the minimum and maximum. In order to find the actual values of the minimum and the maximum, we must evaluate our, our original function y at the critical points. and this will give us the min and max values.
So we'll take our first derivative, which is x squared minus x minus 2. And we'll set that equal to 0. I'll solve it for x by factoring. I'll now use the zero factor property and solve for x. So we have the critical numbers 2 and negative 1. Next, I'll evaluate the second derivative at the critical numbers, which are 2 and negative 1. Our second derivative is 2x minus 1. So we'll find y double prime of 2. And that equals to 3. And since our second derivative evaluated at some number is positive, that indicates that there is a minimum at x equal to 2. I'll now evaluate the second derivative at negative 1. And we have a negative 3. Our second derivative evaluated at some number is negative, which means that there is a maximum at negative 1. To determine the minimum and maximum values, we'll now evaluate the critical numbers into our original function. So we'll evaluate y at the critical numbers 2 and negative 1. Our original function is x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 minus 2x plus a third. We find y of 2. And we get negative 3. We evaluate y of negative 1, and we get 3 halves. Which means that the minimum is negative 3 and it happens at x is equal to 2. The maximum is 3 halves and it happens where x is negative 1.